somebody shout hallelujah 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 the lord is good all the time can you get your bible and while you're getting your bible can you look at somebody that said it's good to see you today please i don't want noises let us leave every other thing let's get our bible it's time for the word of god can you look at another person and say the lord will meet you with you today and can you find another person and said and tell the person that god will never leave you for life in jesus mighty name let us open uh, the word of God. This will be the standpoint through which we flow today. Romans chapter 12. We will read verse number 9. We will read to verse number 12. Romans, the 12th chapter. We will read from verse number 9. Let us read to verse number 12. Are we there? Romans is after the book of Genesis for those that are looking for it. We need to laugh. If you're there, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So we use the King James Version, um, the NIV Version. Let's go. Love must be sincere. Eat what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourself never be lacking in zeal but keep your spiritual fervor serving the lord be joyful in hope patient in affliction faithful in prayer in the name of jesus amen let us have a seat before god and i pray that god will speak to you in the name of jesus now as we know that god has given us a title for the next three Sundays. And the title, the theme is I am a mini. I am not a mini, it's a mini. Let us have a seat, please. Let us hold our Bible for those that will be reading. Please get a mic. May God be with us in the name of Jesus. Let us stop all selling and buying and let us concentrate, uh, concentrate our focus on God. Today is our Mother's Day, right? And you can see the faces of our mothers looking all, all things bright and beautiful. Oh, precious, precious great, great and small. God bless you in the name of Jesus. I know the women will want to sing that wonderful the lord, lord god, god made us all may god continue to keep you in the name of jesus there is no man that wants to either go out or marry a woman that is ugly he all wants to pick what we call beautiful and beautiful is in the eyes of god bless you i know every woman knows that but we men we are different. Can somebody shout hallelujah? For men, sometimes beauty is not in the eyes of the beholder. It's another thing. May God bless us in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Women are home builders. And that is the reason why we need to celebrate them more. And when I talk about women being home builders, I'm not talking about the bad ones because we need to understand this. We have good and we have bad of everything. I was speaking with a friend yesterday and in their community they found a baby that was wrapped in so many things and placed just by the dumpster. That is a woman. But is that a good woman? It does not matter what has pushed her to do that. There are many places you can take kids to and they will take the kid they'll make the life of the kid better. 
But for every woman that we have here at Citizens Global, we are dynamic, right? We are beautiful. These women are the best in the world. If that is so, shout hallelujah. Tell the men, don't get jealous. Your time is coming. Somebody shout hallelujah. You see, if you need growth in any place, it doesn't matter what the place is. Apart from you having God, having the Holy Spirit, having those tools that is needed, there is one essential thing that if it's not in any church, if it's not in any home, if it's not in any community, there is trouble. What, what, what do you think that thing is? Women. You cannot live without them. But you can always live with them. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I'm not going to say the way, you, way you, the way you're saying it. Because whatever you pronounce, that is what you become. You say you cannot live with them. Then you find out that what you have, you always find issues with them. So you will be able to live with them in the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. we, I told us in this church, you pronounce the Lord make it happen and you know you are here be your body to bunko in your world into blue called jesus somebody shout hallelujah see it's trying to get to women's head now now they are starting their own thing now hmm? i was looking listening to i think it's dr morrow and he said if you give women anything they are going to multiply it you give them a house, they make it a home. You give them raw food, they give you a meal. Now give them trouble. They'll, they'll make you pain. And that is what is happening in the first lesson. Because when you look at Nineveh, in the time of Jonah, God has decided that he's going to erase them from the face of this earth. But because of the word of God that came to them, they repented. They changed. And so the Lord said, no, I am not going to destroy you anymore. And we all know the story that even Jonah himself was so mad. Because he thought all he has to do is to speak this word and God will just do it. This was the same reason why he didn't want to go. Because he knows God is kind. But then when it comes to the time of Nahum. The same Nineveh has gone from their good heart to the worst of all hearts. This time around, they have become unstoppable in terms of wickedness. They have become ruthless. In fact, they go after God's people just to show that they are powerful. And you know God, sometimes God will allow many things. But then when it got to Naum, which we are going to read today. Now, chapter 1. If somebody open it, please make sure you have your mic with you. Now, chapter 1. If you read verse 1 to 3, it's speaking about the punishment that God did bring. That time, now was speaking about it. But God did perform it. Can somebody read? Now, chapter 1, verse 1, two to 3. Somebody that is blessed in this church. An oracle yes. concerning Nineveh. Yes. The book of the vision of Nahum. Yes. The El Shok and the El Koshai. Yes. The Lord is a jealous and avenging God. God is a jealous and avenging God. I want us to notice that. God is jealous. Sometimes when we say women are jealous, it's an attribute of God. But there is good jealousy, there is bad ones. I tell people. Even when it comes to you not liking people, that is the good one, that is another one. When it becomes hatred, is what God, is, God doesn't want. You might not like, I might not like the way somebody behaves. I might not like their heart. I might, don't, I might not want to stay with them because they, I know they are planning to corrupt me. But I must not hate. Uh -huh. The Lord takes vengeance. Yes. And is filled with wrath. Uh-huh. The Lord takes vengeance on his foes. Yes. And maintains his wrath uh -huh. against his enemies. Yes. The Lord is slow to anger. God is slow to anger. And great in power. Yes. The Lord will not leave the guilty uh -huh. punished. Yes. His way 
is in the way wind and the storm uh -huh. and clouds are the dust of his feet somebody shout hallelujah let just leave it at that i didn't ask you to sit down you are going to pay the church 50 dollars immediately after the service god bless us in the name of jesus now you can sit down beautifully god bless us in the name of jesus every woman carry a quality that god has and do you know what that quality is they are powerful they are assertive they are very kind but when you take their kindness as stupidity they can also be wrathful if that is true shout hallelujah every woman has a side of them that is kind if they truly care about someone a woman can go all the length to make that person's life nice beautiful but the issue is when you step on their bad side when you feel that you are that your head is bigger than or maybe your leg is bigger than your head and you begin to misbehave they can also make that man's life miserable may that never happen to us in the name of jesus now i'm talking about good women no? some women their destiny is to just begin to destroy des uh, destinies that, that's i'm not talking about that i'm talking about good women we don't have any bad women here in our church and they will never know our church in the name of jesus somebody say amen, amen. god was so kind to forgive Nineveh because the time that god wanted to erase them they had done more worse than any ruler on heart but because their repentance was genuine god had to forgive but now because god forgive they think you know like many of us we do the same thing we think god is slow to anger so what do i do I, okay let me continue until this is full but this time around god said no he would destroy them and god did destroy them may god never destroy us in the name of jesus i want to tell you this that the question is if you defy god do you think god is not going to give you a reward for defying god if you ignore god if you say you know what you don't care about god but then you want god to care about you there's always a reward for every action for every action there's a reaction and so for the navy god was not pleased and i pray that god will be pleased with us in the name of jesus but the question i want to ask you is this is there anyone that mr that is free from sin i am mr perfect here can you stand up let us celebrate you I am Mrs. Buffett here. Can you stand up? The whole church will celebrate you. In fact, we will bow, we will kneel, we will call you all hail Mrs. Buffett or Mr. Buffett. So there's no one that is perfect here. I want somebody to open the book of Ecclesiastes 720. What did he tell us? Ecclesiastes 720. Ecclesiastes is after the it's after regulation. For those that are finding it. Yes. Indeed. Yes. There is no one on earth who is righteous. There is no one on earth that is righteous. That is. Uh, Ellie, can English? No. Eka. Kujepi. Indeed. <laughs> there is no one on earth who is righteous. Yes. No one who does what is right and never sins. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you, sir. Sit down. There is no one on heart that is so righteous that he does not fall into one sin or the other over time. No one. No one. Not even who is the most holiest of holy people that we refer on that. They fall into sin. Because when you, uh, I think three days ago I was driving with some people and while coming, somebody just did something that annoyed me on the road and i said it loud i said ah god bless you i'm a pastor if i'm not a pastor i know what i would have said the question is i have already said it inside me you, you know that 
before you would say that, it's already been spoken. So there is no one. It does not matter how you try, how you put yourself, there will be one thing, one thing that will occur over time. Whether it is somebody that is coming to see you and you tell your child, tell, tell, just, no, 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 no. It is a bad time. Tell him I'm not here. It's a sin that can deprive you of eternity. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. But then God cares about some certain people. Though they might fall into sin, but God cares about them. And that is also written in that book of Nahum. Now, that first chapter, can someone read 7 and 8 for me? 7 and 8. Now, 1, 7 the, and 8. The Lord is good. Yes. A refuge in times of trouble. Before you continue, God will continue to bless you in the name of Jesus. God is simply the only one reading. No, Mike. I find one now. God will continue to bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can I say it one more time? Amen. God will continue to bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And God will bless all of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, let's go. The Lord, the is, Lord is good. Uh -huh. A refuge in times of trouble. Yes. He cares for those who trust in him. He cares for those who trust in him. Uh -huh. But with an overwhelming flood. Uh -huh. He will take he will make an end of Nineveh. Yes. He will pursue his foes into death. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. See that my God bless you. This is God for you. God is good. And we will say all the time. When we say all the time, we say God is good. But does it mean that God doesn't punish? The thing is, when you look at that verse 7, God cares for those that trust in him. God cares for who? Those that trust in him. The question is, do you trust in Christ? If I ask anyone here, do you trust in Christ? We all say yes, right? But the question is, when you fall into any form of challenge, because we we'll never fall into trouble in the name of Jesus, who comes to your mind first? Is it God? Many of us is never God. Let us not lie. Many of us is never God. Before we go to God in prayer, we already call somebody. Hey, you won't know what happened to me now. Oh my goodness, Jesus Christ, this is what happened. I was going on the road and this happened. And then your mind will tell you, go to God. May God help us in the name of Jesus. We must embrace God. We must embrace good works. The basic thing is God himself. But how do you embrace God is what we want to discuss. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Please let us stop discussing or you guys will start paying. May God bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen. That will take us to the second Bible reading. Because most of us, we call ourselves Christians. When you say you are a, you are a Christian, that means you are Christ-like. Is that not true? If you are Christ-like here, yeah, shout Hallelujah. Uh, you see, everybody is now saying, I'm trying to be Christ-like. Uh, don't tell me you are a work in progress. That is the biggest lie that America uses to do wrong. May God help us in the name of Jesus. We are actually all a work in progress. God is still working on us. Paul was discussing many things that I want us to... Please, let us just leave everything and just hold on. You know, we have our own version of Christianity. Many of us have version of Christianity. I bet if we divide this group, this church, to groups, groups of those that come to church constantly, that do many things, groups of those that doesn't come constantly, group of those that come once in a while, I bet those that come constantly will say they are better Christians. Because they come constantly. You know, the woman thinking. But what did Paul give us the understanding of not only Christianity, but the work of Christ? What it should be is what we want to discuss today. And I want you to open to that Romans. 
Because Romans actually defined Christianity, being Christ-like to us, in the end of chapter 2. I want somebody to read verse number 28 and 29. And a person is not a Jew. A person is not a Jew who or a Christian or Christ-like or a Celestians. This I want you to know. This is how you know Celestians. This is what will make you know that this is a true Celestians. Uh -huh. A person is not a Jew. Yes. Who is one only outwardly. You cannot be a Christian only by your outward appearance. Sunday, you wear sotana, your face, your loins, everything is everywhere. You walk with your shoulder eye, you step on the floor like, you know, the floor has eyes. You are calm, you are gentle, but it is only for when you wear your sotana. It is only for when you come to church. It is only for the time that, you know, the shepherd is around, I must not, mis I must not misbehave. You know, people around, let them not go tell church the things that I do. That is outward Christianity. That is outward Celestia, it is not the same as Celestia. Uh huh. Nor is circumcision merely outward and physical. Baptism, anointment, all of that are not really criteria that makes you Celestia. It is those, yes, it is good to be anointed, it's good to have the power, it's good to flow, but that doesn't make you truly a child of God. Uh huh. No, a person is a Jew yes. who, who is one inwardly. You are only a Celestian, a Christian, when it becomes an inward thing. Uh huh. And circumcision is circumcision of the heart. And when your heart is the thing that is being circumcised, you know, many of us they take us to the stream, we get baptized in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And after that, we get out of the water we're supposed to be dead to sin alive to christ but what happens after we continue with the old mentality the old thinking which means the heart itself is not circumcised it is just the body that is just being washed many of us we confess christ they said who wants to give their life to christ we open our mouth we confess christ but after confessing christ what do you do after if the things that you do after does not say you are christ like then it is just an outward thing. You don't have Christ within you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. Is that all? No, sir. Uh -huh. By the Spirit. Yes. Not by the written code. Uh -huh. Not so by Ilano. Not by all of that. It is by the Spirit. Uh -huh. Such a person's praise is not from other people, but from God. Somebody shout Hallelujah. You know, we have many people in the church that they do good things and they want to be praised. If you are part of that people, you are not a celestial. And my shepherd with all the things that I do, he will not for a day say, you know what, this. And the people of the church, they, you know, I come, I clean the church, I arrange the chairs. They cannot even organize my birthday for me. If you are that kind of people, you are not celestial. To be a celestial is an inward thing, not an outward thing. All this that we are carrying does not make you celestial it is your heart if your heart is sad it is if it is circumcised if you have the god of celestial truly inwardly if you have the spirit of god in you and you show the fruit of the spirit that is when you are truly celestial can somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. but in true sense that is what we're going to read today in the normal sense with our thinking, with the things that we do, with the things that we study, what do we find amidst us? Paul begins to expose the secrets of things that happen in the church. And so he, he wants us to know how do we attain that height that we need to attain. The height of knowing that truly I'm a celestial. So let us go to the lesson of today, the second lesson of today. Let us read verse 1 through to number 4. If you are happy to be a shout, hallelujah. Uh -huh. What advantage then yes. is there in being a Jew? What advantage is in you being a Christian? What advantage is in you being a Celestian? Uh -huh. Or what value is there in circumcision? Yes. Uh -huh. Much in every way? It is, you see, you cannot fathom 
the greatness in being a Christian. You cannot fathom the glory in being Christ-like. You cannot fathom the greatness that is being in a true celestial. Uh huh. First of all, yes. First of all, uh huh. The Jews have been entrusted with the very words of God. Uh huh. Number one. What if some were unfaithful? Yes. Would their unfaithfulness notify God's faithfulness? Yes. Not uh, not at all. Yes. Let God be true. Yes. And every human being a liar. Yes. As it is written. Uh huh. So that you may be proved right when you speak. Yes. And prevail when you judge. Yes. But if our unrighteousness brings out God's righteousness uh -huh. more clearly, yes. what shall we say? That God is unjust in bringing his wrath on us. Did you read? That was five. Four. Okay. I said one to four. God bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Paul is exposing some things which happens in the church. The first thing that Paul tells us is as a celestial, the first thing that God has added to you is the word. That's the first thing that God adds to you. The word. You are supposed to be the keeper of God's word. Those that hold on to the word of God. Those that makes that word occur. Those that make people experience that word. But because we are humans, we cannot always be perfect all the time. So the question that Paul is asking is, what if such person falls short of keeping that word? What if such person falls short of that glory called celestials? You know, being that part of the heavenly body, working like it, speaking like it, doing things like it. What if one person falls short of it? Does it mean that God's faithfulness will be thrown away? Does it mean that God's love will be thrown away? So he said, no, it is not true. Because God will never be a liar. Let me tell you, it does not matter what anyone does on life. The love of God for that person does not diminish. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. The love that God has for you. And that is why most today i actually want to speak to those you know there are some people that so many things have occurred in their life and people as the, the words that people have spoken to them have made them to feel that they are not enough like i can never be like but uh, this in the church i can never be like this that that in the church you know i don't even know when i'm going to get to that level who tells you that god is a god of constant love he loves you regardless and I pray that the love of God will never diminish in the name of Jesus. Is, somebody, is anybody telling you you are condemned? Is somebody telling you that you will not make heaven? Is somebody saying that your way of life is so bad that you, you are the son of the devil? It's good. That is the person's judgment. But what does the person know that God asks for you? I have seen people that their life were way worse than anybody. But now... They are the stronghold of Christendom, doing wonders even in God. Why those people that have condemned them of old now are wallowing in sin? May God help all of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. God will always be faithful to every of his word. He said, I did not come. He did not come to make people perish. He has come to give life. And he said he will give it in abundance. May God give us life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Another thing that Paul exposed amidst us, because sometimes in the church, we, some of us feel that we are better. We look at some and say, the kind of life with this person they live. Hey, I don't, I don't, I don't think they go make heaven know. Like, like you, you now have the judge, you are, you are now the judge and the, and, and the judge giver. The, 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 I don't even know. There's a good choice. Thank, thank you, Jerry, for that English word. Okay, you know English is my like 14th language. God bless us in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. So can somebody read 5 to 8? Of that Romans chapter 3. But if our unrighteousness yes. bring out God's righteousness I want you to listen to this very well. More clearly. Uh, what shall we say? It can be a la it no. It can be a la badon. So, uh, gently so that we don't rush. Uh. but if our unrighteousness mm -hmm. 
bring out God's righteousness uh -huh. more clearly. Yes. What shall we say? Uh -huh. That God is unjust in bringing his wrath on us. Uh -huh. I am using a human argument. Yes. Certainly not. Uh -huh. If that were so, how could God judge the world? Yes. Someone might argue. Uh -huh. If my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness yes. and so increases his glory, yes. why am I still condemned as a sinner? Uh -huh. Why not say, yes. as we are slanderously reported, yes. as saying, yes. and as some claim that we say, yes. let us do evil. Let us do evil. That good may result. That good may result. Their uh -huh. condemnation is deserved. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sit down, my God bless you. I want us to look at this because this is a very good argument. If God is the only righteous God, right? And we are sinners from the very beginning. Some people may say, okay, why then did God judge us? At least he knows that we are sinners now. If truly our unrighteousness makes God's righteousness to glow, then many will think, hey, let us let God have his righteousness. And so we continue the way we are. God is not supposed to judge us. And so that has flowed into many that some people believe that what I am doing for God, the way I'm acting in the presence of God, that is what is supposed to push God to do what they want God to do. You know, many of us act like that. Many of us act like that. We think as many times that we come for Wednesday service, Friday service, Sunday service, you know, do everything for the church in maybe three days. God should answer that prayer. Maybe a week. Some of us as master, you know, God's plan. We have God in the palm of our hand. We draft that. But the thing is, God doesn't work that way. Many of us, sometimes we, I want, I want, because God's job is different from our job. And the issue that many of us forget is God has handed something to every man. And that thing which he has handed to us is what will judge us. Do you know what that is? Choice. Choice. The choice to do whatever that you want to do is your call, is your doing, so you should be able to enjoy the reward. Am I lying? Has God ever pushed anybody to go into fornication here? That it was God. You can stand and say, this is what God that told me. Go and sleep with another person's wife. God would not do that. It is our choice. God's job is to constantly forgive until when you can't take it anymore. God's job is to constantly have mercy until you take his kindness for stupidity. Your job is to make the right choice. How many of us are making the right choice? But then we will say, okay, if God knew us, it's on prayer, we pray in celestial church, uh, in many churches even. Say, you know me, I'm a sinner. I cannot, if I walk, my end, my head will move to the right, to the left. And because of that, eh, I lay the body on me. So the body in me, I say, God on me. Eh? Because the earth shakes to the right, and then we should flow in sin. Eh? And some people will say, I want bad Those that, that does not appreciate things that God has done. Eh? May God help us in the name of Jesus. There's so much wrong teaching in the world. One of the wrong teachings that we have in the world is there is some group of Christians now that has to believe that once you call on Jesus and you have Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Every other thing does not matter. Whether you fall in or out of sin, you are going to have. Is that teaching, does it make sense? That is a group. In fact, the majority are in the state now that has that belief that, you, yes, you don't go to heaven by works. Yes, it's true. You don't go to heaven by action. Yes, it's true. But you need to understand that there are, there are principles, there are rules that are tend to so many things. And we are going to get there. May God help us in the name of Jesus. So some people say, so if it is written that from the beginning we have been condemned, why not flow in sin? So that at least God 
will continuously that's his job his job to forgive may god help us in the name of jesus can you look at somebody that said it's your choice and look at another person that says it's your choice and tell somebody else said make the right choice may god help us to make the right choice in the name of jesus and we have an argument in the church even till today that argument is about who is better Some people believe the shepherd is better than everybody. Eh, well, okay. The shepherd is a man. Some people would say, oh, that person is better. Can you read verse 19? Read verse 9, then flow to 19 and 20. Because I'm trying to look at the time so that God can give us the understanding. What that shall we conclude then? Uh huh. You Do we have verse 9, right? Yes. Good. Yeah. Do we have any advantage? Do we have any advantage? Are we any better? Uh huh. Not at all. Yes. For we have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under the power we of sin. We are all under the power of sin. Pagan, Hindus, Christian, Muslim. We are all under the power of sin. Uh huh. And which one did you say? Nineteen and twenty. Now. Yes. We know that whatever the Lord says. Yes. It says to those who are under the law, uh -huh. so that every mouth may be silenced, yes. and the whole world held accountable to God. Yes. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight uh -huh. by the works of the law. Uh -huh. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sins. Somebody shout hallelujah. You see, most of the laws that we have, whether it's the doctrine, whether whatever law that we have in Celestial of Christ, whatever law that we have in the world, the law that we have in the Bible, is to just to make us know that we are fall short of God's glory. It's to remind us that we are not meeting the level that we're supposed to meet. Those laws does not affect God. If you, if you do the things that God asks you not to do, Nothing would happen to God. The reward would be for you to eat and wallow in. It's as simple as that. And the law does not make us righteous. And every time I want to come to church, I always touch the water as I find myself. That does not make you righteous. Every time I come to church, when they ring the bell and bow it down, that does not make you righteous. And I don't come to church if I'm unclean. That does not make you righteous. Uh, every time offer I'm the first that doesn't make those things don't make us righteous those things don't make those things aid the good things that we want you know there's difference between aiding and making you, you know you can make soup and the soup will not taste nice in those things we have things that aid the soup to become palatable you put curry you put maggi you put all of that you begin to add all those characters into it those are the things that we do. Those aids. You want blessing? It aids it. You want growth? It aids it. You want gift? You want a good life? It aids it. But the only thing I'm going to tell you today that can save us, you know what that is? It's our Lord Jesus Christ. If you, as a celestial, does not have Jesus in you, and you think the works of Seleh is going to save you. It is a total lie. You will inherit the heart and you will lose heaven. We will not lose heaven in the name of Jesus. There are many works on heart that you can use to flow, to do well on heart. But when it comes to making heaven, being right in God, it has to be you trusting in God and there's no way you can trust in God but you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and that was why Romans 12 verse 1 and 2 told us that we have to give ourselves to God as a living sacrifice if somebody read it let me just tell you a few things about it because most of us we read it and we just flow through it therefore, uh -huh. therefore uh -huh. I hold you yes brothers God bless you in the name of Jesus. Let somebody else read this. Therefore, uh -huh. I heard you, yes. 
brothers and sisters, uh -huh. in view of God's mercy, yes. to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, uh -huh. holy and pleasing to God. Yes. This is your true and proper worship. I want you to hold up there. When you give a sacrifice, most of us that comes from Nigeria, when you give a sacrifice, do you go back there to look at your sacrifice? To say, I want part of my sacrifice. Do you go? When you give sacrifice, you it is for whoever or whomever that you give it to, to do what pleases with that thing. Is that not true? What that chapter is telling us is, once you give yourself to Christ, you should not be in control anymore. How many of us is in control even when we have Christ? We are the one controlling Christ in our life. Christ will say, go to the right. We will say, no, left is better. If you give yourself a holy sacrifice to God, it is giving. When you give, you leave the rope. You leave everything. You let him control you. And that was why Christ said that though I am going, but I will send to you the spirit. This spirit will teach you. This spirit will guide you. And that is why you, there is nothing anyone can do on earth that will make them make heaven. If not through the influence of the Holy Spirit. Because many of us, when you say you don't want to lie again, one day will come you will lie. When you say no, I don't want to backbite, one day will come you will backbite. You say, I don't want to gossip. One day will come, you gossip. But if you truly have the Holy Spirit in you, if you truly have Christ in you, then it takes control. And you don't even have to worry about the Lord because Christ's likeness will begin to become the image that everyone sees. Are we getting understanding? If you are shout, hallelujah. And that was why I asked us to read that verse 9, Romans 12, 9, 2 to 12, when we read. Because when you look at that word, it is only God that can grant you the love that you need to flow in this life. Sit down, God bless you. Because God is love. Is God not love? Many of us that you have people that hate, you have people that hate you. If you have God in you, you will continue to love them. When they hate you, they are hating God. And that is why God told us today that I am the God of justice. Because once you have God with you, God becomes your judge. He begins to guide you. He begins to protect you. And anyone that stands against you, God fights against them. Do you see the reason why we need to have more of Christ and less of works? More of Christ. Less of works. Because if Christ is in you, he said you will command the mountain to move and it will move. When I was growing up, there's so much wonder in the Church of Christ to the level that I wonder why is all of this, it is so big. People getting ill, the dead rising, people, the blind are opening their eyes, the crazy are becoming normal. Many things is happening. But once we begin to move away from Christ, things begin to change. I pray that God will come into you in the name of Jesus. Can somebody shout hallelujah? You know, there's a song that the Lord gave me said, I am glad I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Shannon Beanie. Everyone is sitting there calling now. Glad Let her come in. I belong, I belong to Jesus. Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to the Lord. Are you glad? I, I am, am glad. glad. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to thy love. I am glad. I am glad. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us sit down. I'm about to bring this to a close. You see, in Celestial Church of Christ, God has given us what I call tremendous power. I'm telling you, in this church, I have seen many things. I was telling one person here, I said, that there's a time that we will just be in the church, maybe myself and some of my brothers, my dad, my mom might not be around. And someone would come and say, the Lord asked us to come to this church for prayer. I need prayer about this. We will get the either 
the sword that we use in the church. We we'll put it around us. We we'll pray for the person. Miracle would occur. What has taken that out now? Is as God on, as is God unfaithful? No, God has not gone anywhere. The thing is, we have made our choices to not be with Him, and that is why in the manifestation is not showing. If you are truly in Christ, He said, "If as I in the Father, if you reside in Me." There is nothing that you ask that cannot be done. But how many of us is in Christ now? Huh? If they tell you not to do anything, that is the foremost thing that you want to do. Many people, they will just tell them, stay away from this. That will become what they love. And the good thing is when you have Christ and Christ gives you the Holy Spirit, do you know what it does? The Holy Spirit gives you the tool. There are some tools that is needed to work this life. What are those tools? Wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, the fear of the Lord. When you have God in you, it gives you all of that. And so you don't have to worry about how to keep life. And I want to become a better Christian. You don't think of that because now Christ is in you. He directs you. But when you don't give it all to Christ, then you are taking, you, you, have, you have the whole house. You, you are taking the living room and you are trying to give Christ uh, maybe the toilet or the bedroom. How would that? How would it take charge? How would be able to direct you? How would it be able to teach you? The role of God in our life is to guide us. So if you are guiding yourself, we will never be in trouble in the name of Jesus. The role of the Holy Spirit is to channel your life. I told God, I said, look, I don't even want to do things, you know, speak the word. I don't even want to speak by myself anymore. I just want to open my mouth and have you just flow you see when you get to that level then you don't have to worry about the laws anymore because now you are christ-like you flow in the mind of christ you walk in the mind of christ and you'll be glorified in christ we will all be glorified in the name of jesus Amen. but finally i'm going to tell you if you can receive and walk in christ god becomes the i am for you a standing gap for you in all places. It becomes that God that judges those that come against you. It becomes that God that fights against those that fight against you. It becomes that God that makes things happen in your life, not you anymore. Because most of the time we think it's our wisdom, we think it's our knowledge, we think it's our understanding. But I tell you, if God can just shut the door of life to someone now, that person is done. May God help us all in the name of Jesus. So what is God going to do for us? What do you think God wants to do for us? He wants to fight your battle. Let us rise on our feet. Let us stand. Let us face the altar. Please hold your candle.